So my name is Simon Manchip and I'm the co-founder and executive creative director of Someone. And um, Someone is a silly name for a serious business in London, but we're working all over the world on launching and relaunching brands. They can be small ones, big ones, all sorts of ones really. Um, it, we are not specialists in any particular sector, we're working all over the, the sectors, like from commercial sectors to charity sectors to all sorts, sports and entertainment and everything. And we've been going for 10 years now, um, which is amazing. We're as surprised as you are. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's, we're 45 people uh, at the moment and we're growing and uh, it's going very, very well. It's going very interesting projects. Some of the biggest projects we've ever worked on are on now in the studio. So um, yeah, that's someone. Working at someone is, is, is great. You know, we're all, we're like a family here. We all get on so well and it's such a creative environment. We kind of really encourage to push the boundaries and do something different. We don't just kind of, you know, do what's expected of us, which is really exciting. So I think as soon as the kind of job's in, um, once the kind of, often there's a strategy front end, but once the creative bit is in, we're all kind of on board feeding in creative ideas. And from there, it's kind of very much a, whatever stage you're at, you, you have kind of just as much possibility to be involved with the job as anyone else and that's quite a nice way to approach it all because it always feels quite collaborative because everyone's feeding in their ideas and one idea might go forward and it might be a junior designer's idea but actually everyone feeds into it and we work along the stages and it kind of gives everyone an opportunity to be involved at every stage from the beginning right through to the rollout at the end which is quite a nice way to do it. So we've been working a lot with Cancer Research UK and I've recently developed a sub-brand for the kids and teens section which uses a graphic language of doodles because um, obviously we want to reflect the kind of youthful side of um, this part of the, the, the company. I think that the specifically what's been really fascinating to have uh, the Syntec in the house is that um, for, for two, there's been two really interesting things happening. So uh, one is that this kind of need for refinement and one is the kind of desire for origination. So um, actually, they, they said that Concorde was the last beautiful aeroplane because it was designed by hand. Because that wing is actually the perfect arc of a, a wrist. Um, whereas now, you've got these incredible dreamliners and things that are actually pretty ugly, um, but they're obviously designed by computer so that they can be very efficient, etc. So actually, when it comes to refinement, the, the, the hand is obviously a very sophisticated tool. And we're working on some work at the moment that actually is almost heraldic in its basis. And so we've been doing it all by hand, just getting these perfectly refined lines. And it has been truly amazing for that. And so um, refinement and craft, I think, is something that's always been on the top of people's agenda. And that's been super useful. The Cintiq has been absolutely amazing um, in the development of this brand identity because it's just, I mean, the, you know, firstly, the, the great thing is, is you can kind of use it like a sketchbook. It's really free and to get your ideas down um, and quickly visualise things is um, it's just super easy and, and it speeds up the process. And I think one of the great things um, for me was that you can actually, you can program the pen to respond to the pressure of your hand. And so it really does work, you know, like a normal pen would on a sketchbook. Um, and it keeps the stroke live as well. So rather than having to draw and then scan and vectorize, and then you're kind of stuck with that shape, you have a lot more flexibility and you can change the stroke weights afterwards. And yeah, it's, it's um, been really useful. Getting that illustrative style through instantly has kind of been quite a nice, natural, fluid way of working with the Cintiq. Um, and then also with cancer research, we, I find it helpful in kind of just refinement of stuff. So whether you're working in a Photoshop visual or something, I found that going into it and working with the details, adding highlights, adding little detail that's really kind of intuitive to how you want to work um, or how we kind of used to work with a brush or a pencil even, um, has been really nice experience basically that we haven't really had before. Um, so yeah, kind of that side of experimentation and the kind of real detailed refinement has kind of been the two key aspects which is coming to play basically um, throughout the studio, I think. So I was mainly working with an illustrator. Um, just, you know, the best thing was I could kind of just sketch away, you know, draw, start developing ideas for these doodles. But then I had the flexibility of changing um, the different brushes and, you know, 
altering the different stroke weights and things afterwards, which was really useful. Um, and it also meant that we could create a suite of doodles that all aligned and they all looked um, cohesive. So I suppose ergonomically in usage it's been great because we've always kind of used tablets and Wacoms and there is a certain kind of restriction with size but suddenly we've got this in front of us and yeah it's great you get the full arm movement you get full kind of range of use if you like but also and then we've we've actually found ourselves moving it around and yeah just completely free as if you've got a piece of paper in front of you essentially and um, which has been really nice the, in, in the perfect world you can draw in a sketchbook and then go control alt delete or you know undo and actually with the Cintiq you can do that it's, it's it's pretty awesome you know you can draw with one hand and then you can just go undo you know with your left hand and the biggest kind of most fun we've had with it and experimentation is using it in Illustrator because the kind of the pressure sensitivity and the kind of natural fluidity of it has lent itself really nicely to creating the kind of stuff that we've wanted to create. So yeah, Illustrator and also the kind of the airbrush effect in Photoshop has just been perfect. You kind of once you've set it up, I find that you don't really need to tweak the settings. You can just go in, use the pressure to kind of get different strength of line coming through, and that's worked really nicely, adding little detail, highlights stuff like that basically. Increasingly we're getting more and more requests from companies who need to engage with their audiences on a more personal level uh, and it's one of the worst brand values ever is to be a human brand but actually to look human and look handmade and that kind of idea of wabi-sabi, the kind of right kind of wrong that the Japanese have which shows that kind of handmade feel just takes away all that kind of clinical business that uh, Beziers do so well. So we've been using it on live projects uh, to enable us to better connect with those audiences. And it's been amazing, genuinely amazing. Um, we don't want to give it back. <laughs> One thing that potentially could be improved on is actually the screen quality. Um, it's, you know, it's slightly less sharp than an actual Mac computer, um, but still absolutely works great, but potentially could just be a, a little bit sharper. Primarily, it's, primarily it's going to be a lot, sorry, I'll go Especially down the road for new. Um, sorry, I've got a mind blank. Oh,